Oh, hey guys. I'm just um, just digesting some beer. If you have a look at this, um, this cover looks strangely like a certain homebrew competition, don't you think? Could just be coincidence, but maybe not, eh? Anyway, welcome to another exciting edition of Digesting Beer. We're getting really into it now. We're getting digesting. Um, and this week, I thought I'd talk about vessels. Vessels. Um, and generally, what we put our beer into, how we store our beer. Um, if we're going to age them, as we talked about before, um, yeah, you're going to have it in something, in some sort of vessels. And you've got generally three types. You've got one bottles, two cans, and three kegs. So let's talk about bottles to start with. Bottles as a sort of classic kind of uh, beer thing. Beer bottles have been going back for years and years. And obviously you have the ceramic ones, um, you have the stoneware and earthenware and all this kind of stuff. Um, but generally these days we're talking about uh, bottles as in 500 or pint bottles, maybe even slightly bigger like growlers or things like that, sort of two, uh, two three pint quarts, you know, that kind of stuff, depending on where you live. Um, and that's kind of the staple, isn't it? Um, and bottles are clean, they're easy to, to use. For a home brewer, they're really good because you can keep them, wash them out and put your own beer into them. Assuming, of course, they've got the correct uh, caps on because they do, these sneaky manufacturers do vary the sizes of the caps and sometimes make it very difficult for the home brewer to, uh, to reuse their bottles. Um, but of recent years, people have started putting craft beer home brews, well not so much home brews, but uh, craft beer and real ales and that kind of stuff into cans. And it's kind of come through a lot in the craft brew uh, section, and in America especially. Cans generally um, are cheaper to manufacture than uh, glass bottles. Um, do you do, this is a big question, do you or can you do a secondary ferment in a can? I don't see why not, but I'm not sure if people have started actually doing that yet. Um, be interesting. And then, of course, thirdly, we've got kegs. And generally, there's two types of kegs, too. You have the cask, the cask condition ale, the real ale, which is generally kind of still, um, and it's not under any kind of pressure, apart from the natural pressure from, uh, from the yeast. Think of it like a bottle conditioned keg, if you like. Um, and you generally hammer a tap into that, and they're called gravity fed, because um, there's no pressure within the line. So you have to suck it out, basically. And then you've got the pressurized kegs. Um, we're talking generally CO2, carbon dioxide, which puts the bubble in your beer, strangely enough. And sometimes for certain things, such as Guinness, they've really pioneered this, although other, um, other breweries have been doing the same. And they run a, a system which is a percentage, I think it's about 80% carbon dioxide, 20% nitrogen. Um, and essentially it creates a really smooth, kind of small bubbled, variety um, and it on Guinness it gets that really typical tight-knit head you know the typical Guinness head which is nitrogen and some of the uh, widgets you get in these draft uh, bottle uh, draft cans um, have got a little bit of primed nitrogen in them as well so that's how you can get a kind of the Guinness head at home if I like to think of it like that and Guinness is quite a good um, one to think about because they do cask, uh, pressurised cask or pressurised kegs I should say, I'm even getting confused myself now, um, which is their own nitrogen carbon dioxide system. They also do uh, cans, widget cans that have the nitrogen uh, prime thing in, but also they do normal cans as well and they do bottles as well. Very, very bizarre. And weirdly for Guinness, 
there are three breweries as well. And I think multiple breweries use multiple different vessels. So it gets very complicated. You've got the Dublin brewery, which is obviously the big bad boy. You do have the English brewery that brew uh, Guinness over in England, where I am, over here. And also you have Nigerian Guinness. Believe it or not, they generally do the export and the stronger ones. Um, so if you go into the supermarket, you could be getting three different kinds of the same product um, brewed in different vessels and brewed in different locations around the world. Whew, getting complicated already, you see, with the vessel. Anyway, we're about six minutes into this video now. And what I want to ask you is the question for you to comment in the comment section below. What do you think is the best vessel for serving beer and why? A lot of purists like either bottles, cask condition bottles, if you like, or the casks, because they're old school. They're sort of, they're the camera members. Um, camera, as you, I showed you at the beginning, this is their magazine, the campaign, whoop, where is it? It's the other side. Campaign for real ale. They don't like the idea of pressurizing uh, kegs and essentially putting something that would form naturally, but taking it out and then putting it back in. Um, I went to a beer festival recently and some of the breweries were advertising their beers as being vegan beers because basically they didn't put any kind of um, uh, finings into their beer. Usually it's crustacean based or animal based stuff. Some people use blood, some people use, uh, as I say, crustaceans from the sea. The vegans obviously don't like that. Um, but they're getting back to the real pure kind of aspect of a beer. They're not taking anything away that isn't there to begin with, if that makes sense. Whereas some of the kegs that are pressurized by carbon dioxide, um, carbonated, if you like, force carved, they call it, um, you kill the yeast, essentially. You can do it by pasteurizing, by adding some sort of finings or chemicals, or you can heat the beer and kill them off that way, burn them to death, apparently. And then what people do is they put the carbon dioxide back into the beer under essentially false conditions. Um, and it tends to, you get a more consistent beer, you get a more consistent product. And for the really big, big breweries, that's what they want. They want all their products to be on a certain level. So they're controlling absolutely everything. Um, whereas your home brewer, they are starting to force carb. Uh, we are using finings and stuff in our, in our beers. Um, we are using keg, kegging systems, um, kegerators or keysers. Um, to get our cool our beer to be cool and we're force carbonating it using carbon dioxide systems and we're serving our beer through beer pumps so it's almost as close as a pub as you can possibly get but don't forget they do car scales in pubs too i've not seen many home brewers with a with a cask setup that has a gravity fed uh, pump coming out of a, a cask essentially Although it's possible, um, I don't, yeah, I haven't really seen that. Um, cans of beer tend to be, in the past, they tend to be the preserve of the lager drinker. Um, you know what I mean. Ah, drink, drink, psh, it's too easy. You just pull the ring, pull, ah, psh, drink the can and then throw it over your shoulder into the street. Um, and generally that's the, the device that separates the, the lager drinker from the real ale drinker or the proper beer drinker. Um, however, I know over here in the UK, Six Point um, have started doing beer in cans. And if you go to America, a lot of the craft brewers um, brew up and put their products into cans. It's a lot easier um, once you've paid the money to get your canning system, uh, your overheads are a lot cheaper than glass bottles because glass breaks. Uh, and tin cans don't, essentially. I have looked at certain beer reviewers. Mr. Beer Goggles is one of those. Um, he's a really good guy. Check out his videos. I highly recommend them. And he has tried 
beer in cans versus beer in glass bottles and believe it or not there is a difference he tends to prefer the product coming out of a can I'm thinking Guinness especially but there are other ones um, Hobgoblins another one very it's October Hobgoblins in the air tend to be a better consistent product in the can as opposed to the bottle why is that it's weird maybe it's a different recipe maybe not I don't know so anyway that is today's digesting beer we're talking about vessels let me know what your favorite vessel is why do you like drinking out of it <laughs> hopefully this has been interesting for you it's been interesting me kind of go through the uh, the process of thinking about this live on camera um, I don't really mind so long as I have a great tasting beer I don't really mind whether it's in a bottle from the cask or from a can but hey that's just me because I like digesting beer take care guys until the next time make sure you click like and subscribe and let me know your comments down below